Yeah. Delivery by 9.45 in the morning next day. Thank you, Motion Raceworks. <laughs> Today's going to be productive. Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Thank you for hanging out with us once again. I appreciate it. This video is all about our 21 foot Eliminator Daytona jet boat. We're huge fans of bolting really nice parts onto really crappy vehicles, but when it comes to our watercraft, well, most of the time we bolt insanely nice parts onto insanely nice drag boats, and this is gonna be no different. We have a brand new Eliminator Daytona jet boat hull, and we have a brand new Texas Speed Long Block, and I had a dream that I would have two fuel systems in this boat one running pump gas and another one with race fuel. And as soon as I rolled into the gas pedal and the ECU for a Holley Dominator saw boost, that that second fuel pump and that second fuel system would engage and put fuel through a second set of injectors in another fuel rail. And this thing would just haul ass. Well, that's not easy to do. And uh, there are two ways to accomplish it. You can modify an existing intake for a second set of injector bungs, or you can call up Frankenstein Engine Dynamics, who created this insane billet aluminum. Oh, it's art. It's literally art. It is a tunnel ram with a brick style intercooler built into it. And it has provisions for not just one row of eight injectors. If you look down the middle of it, there's a second set of injector bungs in there. And, uh, it's incredible. I've never used one before. It's really, really expensive. It's the most money I've ever spent on an intake manifold. Full disclosure, this thing was over $7,000. It, it's, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. And uh, I want to thank you guys for that because if you hadn't bought all the damn t-shirts, we wouldn't have something like this on this boat. So thank you guys. And, uh, and if you haven't gotten a t-shirt yet, fsmgarage.com is where you can find all our new merch. Hoodies, hats, t-shirts, stickers, all that stuff. And so today's goal is get this thing mocked up on the LSX. That is gonna be made possible by the good folks at Motion Raceworks who overnighted everything. We have a throttle body for that. We have the stuff to plumb, not just the hot side, but the cold side. We have a steam line kit. We have a billet valley cover. We have a puke tank. We have connections. We have a lot of good parts we need to kickstart this build. Motion Race for Excel's a CO2 kit for a lot of different things. Air shifters for your race car. If you want to run CO2 on your wastegate diaphragms to control your boost. They have aluminum bottles. They have regulators that are adjustable. They also have these cool aluminum clamps that are super easy to get on and off. You just unthread that and then you don't have to slide the bottle out. This wraps around it and clamps on and off. And it's way easier to get a bottle in and out with this type of clamp than it is the kind where you need a wrench to do it or, you know, it's the kind of deal where you have to slide the bottle in and out. This is way, way easier. Like game over, where you gotta get a five sixth inch wrench and loosen, loosen it up and yeah. then pull it out and then... Exactly. Yeah. All right. So with that in mind then, what we're gonna do is put it so that the, we'll put it straight up and down. We'll sit it on the rubber and that'll be inboard there and that'll be easy to reach. And I think that's where we're drilling holes. People are obsessed with the throw pillows. Yeah. Just full disclosure, I didn't ask for these. Fernando at Atlanta Stitchworks did a killer job on the seats for the boat and decided to make these for my wife. And um, yeah, they're going to fly out at a buck 40. They're going to fly out at 27 miles an hour yeah. too. But uh, it's a nice touch and I appreciate it. So. These are her pillows. There we go. So our seats are just mounted on thick pieces of angled aluminum. We got this stuff from McMaster Car and like a 12 foot long stick. It's quarter inch thick. It is three by three. We'll go back later, radius the corners, put some windows in it in places where it doesn't need to be super strong and we'll take some weight out of that. I'm gonna show you guys a new tool here in a second. It's not new. If you've watched this channel from the very beginning, I'll, you'll have seen this tool before, but it's been a long time since I used it. It's gonna be really hard to see, but this is the secret to finding the center of a hole that you can't see. Here's what I mean. This is called a transfer screw. See, it's got threads right there, and on the other side, it has a little point. 
and comes in this cool tool that also doubles as the storage case. And anyway, you put it in there and then you thread this into a bracket that you want to mount. And then you take that bracket and just lightly tap it with a hammer and the point just sticks out of the bracket and marks whatever you need to drill. So for instance, we want to mount our CO2 bottle to the bulkhead of the boat. I'm just going to thread that in there and I'm going to leave just the point sticking out. And I'm going to do one in each of these and then I'm going to hold the bracket up and just lightly tap it with a rubber mallet so as not to mark the finish. And then these are going to poke the tape that's on the bulkhead that I need to drill. Move this out of the way, drill the holes, and they're perfect every time. So let me put the second one in. You can buy these off Amazon.com. Uh, McMaster Car sells them. Like, uh, you can get them a bunch of different places. And they're called transfer screws or transfer points. And uh, they work awesome. It helps if you get them fairly level, you know, thread them in and get the distance that they stick out close to the same. That makes it a lot easier. All right, uh, neighbor, you want to grab me a rubber mallet? And I'll mark these. So there's our transfer points. I'll turn this around. I've got three-eighths inch thick piece of rubber down here to space this off the floor of the boat. And then... There we go, there's one there, there's one there. And if you ever question where they're at, you can take a ruler and measure the distance. center. Looks like we are two and a half inches apart. So two and a half inches is right there. So it looks like that's our hole and that's our hole. All right, can I get a punch, Dave? The drill might have walked a little bit, maybe. There it is. Nailed it. Nice and straight too. Right. Yeah. Cool. The UPS guy dropped off a box from Shearer Fab, which are our T4 turbo flanges, which means we can mock up the intake, our throttle body, and the turbo and start eyeballing yes. plumbing. And we might be able to tack together a hot side today, which would be sick. Because a lot of things on the boat can't be done until the turbos are in here. Yeah. A lot of things we've got to mount back here that we don't know, if, you know how much room we have for. Plus seeing the turbos hanging would be oh. sweet. So right now what we're gonna do is quickly throw on the Motion Raceworks Valley Plate and probably the Steamline Kit and then we'll put the intake on, bolt it down without the fuel rails and then uh, Start eyeballing the turbo plumbing. Yeah, there's lots of things we're missing. Like this, we could be missing like one little thing, and it just holds up a bunch of other things. But yeah, like gonna, the, like the injectors. But we're going we're going to move forward and just you know. Yeah, we don't have the injectors to put in, but we can still put the intake in there temporarily. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh man. What the hell is, oh, this is it for the, that, just a vent case. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. You got the new one? Um, oh, here it is. I got you. I don't. Looks like the same bolts. If they are, we'll reuse these. These are stainless. These are nice. Yeah, the same thing. They look shorter. Oh. Is this thinner? Uh, oh, the could, yeah, the bolts are countersunk into this. Yep, here so. you go. Me, I got you. Ooh, is that an oil pressure port right there? It is. Right there. Boom. Because isn't the stock oil pressure sending unit right there? The For the gauge, yeah. Yeah, so we can use that to feed the turbos. Beautiful. Is it, is it eighth pipe? Yes. Perfect. And I'll probably need a different... A different Allen socket for this. Oh, this looks so much better. It's like the same head. Is it? It looks smaller. Let me see. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry, what'd you say? <laughs> oh, I was going to say those could go in one No, I meant the part you said I'm right. Metric bolt pin. Yeah. Remember when you said I was right? That part. Yeah, you want a monument? <laughs> you want to it right now? Come on now. <laughs> Don't take it away from Let's me. Put a statue up right here. On this day. Right. 2-23-22, Newburn was correct about what I have no idea. I don't forget, but yeah, whatever. It wasn't wiring. Green, green's not ground. It's still not. In the house, it is. Green is ground in the house. White is neutral, black is hot. You can't race your house. You can. And you'll see that on an upcoming episode <laughs> of Fast Ride. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we know we've jumped the shark on that show. They're racing homes. Mobile homes? No, just homes. They're going where no house has gone before. So I want to give a shout out to the, the draft chef services down there. Those dudes are just absolutely amazing. When did you drop that off? Yesterday. When did you get it back? Just it was it, it was done yesterday. He forgot to call me. <laughs> Dude, I've literally, I've literally dropped off a draft chef down there. They've called me on the way back here and said, hey, man, your shaft's finished. I'm like, what? It's only a 30-minute drive. Yeah. Yeah, if you just need it shortened, yeah. dude, it will bust it I love out. it. Dude, even the Motion Raceworks packaging is top-notch. <laughs> Everything about it. I like that they make all their stuff in, what is it, Iowa? Mm -hmm. It's America. Somewhere in America. I think it's Iowa. Can you imagine if you live next to this place? I could just roll up there and get your stuff. I'm just glad we don't live closer to Summit. That would be bad. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, they even labeled it. Driver front. Heck yeah. I remember when people first started LS swapping stuff, right? And uh, like a long time ago. But I remember my first LS swap was in a C10 back in 06, I think. And... Um, trying to get steam lines. There weren't aftermarket parts oh, for them. Yeah. And trying to find the stock ones, pain in the ass. Good luck. So your first your first LS swap was a what? Uh, was it that 67 C10? Oh, part? really? Yeah, it had an LS2 in it back in 2006. No way. First. My first LS swap was in a 1926 Coupe Essex. I don't even know what that is. That's impressive, though. It almost looks like a, like a Model T. It's similar to like a Model T, like the, as far as the body and like the windows and stuff. Wow. But yeah, it's it pretty crazy. And that was in like 05. Got it backwards. Got it? fit. That may, be, that may work. I don't know. Alright, let's get some bolts. Nah, those are right where the injectors go. Yeah. If anything, we'll use these to we'll just turn them out, all four corners, and then figure out a different way. Just use braided line. Yep. That's all you gotta do is just, well, get rid of the hard lines and we'll, I'll measure those and we'll, I'll just order some braided line and then just run it to the same block and everything. Just We can just go connect it side to side, I think. And just tee it out? Yep. Okay. 
It looks so much better with the black valley plate. God, think about that. Aftermarket heads. Who knows if the deck height is exactly whatever. And yet the intake from a totally different company just bolts right on. Bolt holes line. Perfect. These are nice parts. No massaging necessary to install the intake. It's so good. Um, huge piece of the puzzle right here. Came from Motion Raceworks. We're gonna be saying that a lot in this video because a lot, well, mostly all of the accessories we're using came from there. Uh, made in the USA parts, but that's really not what's important about these two items. What's important about these two items are they are made for tight turbo installations. This is a 102 millimeter Icon throttle body. This is fantastic and really short. The distance from the flange of the intake out is really short. And then this Y adapter, which is God, CNC machined, O-ringed, V-band flange, unbelievably short. And this is what's gonna make it where we can have two tubes come this way and clear the back of the boat. Or if you're falling on a, on a big budget and you've got one of these intakes and you're doing this in you know, your truck or your car, this is what's gonna give you room between you know, your core support, your radiator, whatever, and your charge tubes. Um, these things are amazing. Uh, everything we're using, we'll put a link to the, all the parts in the description of this video. And uh, this is, let's, let's hang a turbo, this is amazing. I'm so excited. We are kicking off our turbo build with this. And this is gonna save a lot of time. This is from Stainless Headers Manufacturing. This is a log style LS manifold designed specifically for turbocharging your engine the easy way. Uh, if you plan this right, you don't ever have to pick up a TIG welder. You can call up Stainless Headers or go to their website. You can select one of these. This is the straight version. They also make an up and forward. Um, they sell everything. They even sell a complete kit. You can buy the manifold, you can buy the elbows, you can buy downpipes, Borg Warner turbos, um, flanges, bends, wastegates, everything to piece together a system or they have a complete system. Best of all, you don't ever have to worry about this thing breaking. This is a half inch thick laser cut flange. The log is 120 wall. I mean, it is thick. It's gonna retain heat in the pipe. Your engine bay isn't gonna get super hot, you know, which is a byproduct of using really thin tubing that eventually will crack. That means more energy going through the exhaust, not getting you know, radiated off of it. More energy going into your turbo, more power, right? Uh, we are gonna take this, we are gonna combine it with a 90 degree elbow, and then I'm pretty sure this is gonna be the easiest turbo kit we've ever plumbed because I think out of that 90 degree elbow, we're gonna go right into this T4 adapter, which is a really, really nice CNC machine stainless part. This one came from Shearer Fab. This will change our T4 flange into three inch round tubing. And then our NRE 72 millimeter turbo will go right on top of all of it. We'll have to add some bracing because obviously that's a lot of weight. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the fastest turbo assembly we've ever installed on anything, let alone a jet boat. I just want to show you guys this real quick. And I'm sure there's going to be a glare, so it'll be hard to see. But if you go to the Stainless Headers website, not only can you select from a range of you know custom header building kits, but they sell completes that are ready to go. You know, I already showed you our manifold, but look at all the other ones they make. So obviously they have them for all the popular stuff like big block Chevy, LS, small block Ford. They also have them for Pontiac D port heads, 455 stuff, you know, 289. Ford, I mean, they have so many applications. Um, but the cool part here is, is just when you click on one of these, right? You get to pick, you know, if you have a good idea of where everything's gotta go, you know, there's the manifold, but then you can pick what degree you want the V-band on there, right? You can pick, you know, what size elbow you want for the turbo, what flange, you know, you want it ceramic coated, all of that. And the lead time on this stuff is sh really short. At the time we made this video, I think it was less than two weeks for a kit. Um, and to be honest, a lot of the stuff they do have in stock anyway. So 
Um, the website works good. These are good people. This stuff is all made in America. You've seen me use it here before, so I don't really need to tell you how happy I am with the stuff that I get from Stainless Headers Inc. But uh, yeah, this is going to be simple. So in an effort to uh, protect the passengers in the boat, we're going to flip these backwards and mount the turbos behind the engine. That'll do two things. It'll minimize the noise and the heat in the back seat area, but also it'll keep people's hair from ending up getting sucked into the turbos, which is always a possibility in a jet boat, especially if you put the turbos right here. These are turbos and these are very unique. There is a left and a right hand 72 millimeter turbo sitting on this bench. They're patented. Uh, Nelson Racing Engines developed them, specifically Tom Nelson. I think, as far as I know, this is the first time anyone's ever done this. Um, they're called mirror image turbos. And the reason they're called that is because, again, you have a left and a right, which means the plumbing for the hot side and the cold side can be virtually identical if you, you know, do everything right, uh, which means it's gonna look cooler. So you guys out there, from the very first time that I showed you Game Over and the precision turbos I was gonna use on that, were shouting, you know, banging on your keyboards going, why aren't you using the NRE turbos? Uh, and the simple fact was, is I had the precisions and they're a great turbo and they work awesome. So do these. And finally, I had the opportunity in a project to use them, so we're going to. These are water-cooled. And if you've never seen a water-cooled turbo, let me show you what that means. Here is the hot side and the cold side of the turbo. There is the center section, and normally you would see two ports, an oil feed and an oil drain, which are right here. This is the oil drain. On the opposite side is the oil feed, but you also have these other ports, which are located 90 degrees to the oil feed and the oil drain. Those are for water cooling. Why do we need water cooling? Well, because these turbos were designed for it. Now, there are variants of these turbos that don't have water cooling. These ones do, and it's not because this is for a boat. This is just an extra way to make sure the center section, which includes the uh, cartridge bearing, which in this case is ceramic, um, the shaft seal, uh, the oil seal, it keeps all those things from burning up after you shut the turbo down. Now, as long as the turbo is designed with you know, oil cooling strictly in mind and no water cooling, that will live too, but this one is designed so that not only does the oil flow in there to keep those things cool, but water does as well. Now the water is there, yes, it's going to flow the whole time the engine's running, but something unique is gonna happen after we shut the engine off. If this center section is rotated to a 20 degree angle in relation to, you know, basically, the vehicle, in this case the boat, the water after we shut the engine off will actually get siphoned in here. So even though the engine's off, the water pump, the water system's not flowing any water, the extreme heat that's going to be in here is actually going to siphon the water after the engine shuts off. And that's good because a lot of the damage can occur when the engine is not running and you don't have oil flowing through this thing to pull the heat out of the center section. Um, most of the heat is coming from the turbine, and when you shut all that down, it radiates into the center section, and it will barbecue the seal, it will barbecue the bearing, but if you have this mounted at a 20 degree angle, when you shut the motor off, the intense heat in here will actually draw the water for several minutes afterwards and continue to cool the center section. So it's imperative that if you have a water-cooled turbo, that you do hook up those extra ports and lines here and that you do mount this thing on an angle so that the water can flow after the engine is turned off. Does that complicate things? Yes, it does. Luckily, everything is adjustable, so we can loosen up the bolts on both sides, on the compressor side, on the turbine side, and we can rotate the center section to get that angle. But there's another key to that, the return line. So the water's gonna come in the bottom, the return line out the top, has to go back to the cooling system without a trap in it. No uphill, no downhill, no hills. It has to be able to flow. So that gets complicated. If you're kind of like me and you have OCD about plumbing and you want nice straight lines and 90 degree angles and you want the plumbing to look beautiful, 
you're going to have to set that aside depending on where in your vehicle these things are mounted because you need a straight shot. Nice gentle angle back to wherever that uh, hot water exiting the turbo needs to go. So what I, what I mean, I'm going to point all this out to you is this is oil in, this is oil out. Obviously you want the oil out to be close to vertical so that it can flow freely back to the oil pan to return the oil out of the turbos. If you don't do that and it doesn't flow back down there, then uh, your turbos are gonna smoke. But these ports, we rotate so that it's like this. The bottom port is where the cold water comes in. The top port should be at a 20 degree angle. And then the water outlet out of the top port should just have a nice gentle flow all the way back down to wherever that water's gotta go. Um, whether you're returning to the radiator, whether you're returning back into the cooling system. In our case, it's an open cooling system. Water comes in from the jet drive, goes through the motor, goes through the turbos, and then just goes out of the boat. But it's imperative that you clock this so that the water outlet line, the top one, is sitting at a 20 degree angle uphill and that the oil outlet has a good enough you know, downhill slope to it so that it'll return oil to the pan. But luckily you can undo all the bolts and clock all of this stuff, tighten it back down and then mount your turbos and it should be all good as long as you do that. That was a lot of information. <laughs> it's important though, I don't want you guys to go buy turbos and go, what are those extra ports? I don't know, plug them. Because what happens is you go out there and hot rod your, your project car, whatever it is, you go really fast and then shut it off, say at the top end of the drag strip or you know the parking lot of grocery store, whatever it is. And while you're inside buying groceries or getting your time slip, the oil seal and the bearing inside your water-cooled turbo is getting just destroyed because you have no water going to it. I'll hold it. We think we want our T4 flange, you know, the exhaust perpendicular to the engine. So I'll hold this here. I'll hold both of these, both sides of the turbo, and then you rotate this and then we'll clock it. Once we get this mounted, we can put the uh, digital angle finder on this and zero it, and then this is a flat spot. We pull that plug, put the angle finder on that, and clock it and put it exactly at 20 degrees. Yeah, and I think you're you're in the ballpark, so I'm just gonna snug these. Yeah, right I can tell, I can look at it. Finally calibrated eye. I'm, I, I'm a human level, I can tell you how long stuff is, and. And I can tell you degrees. You are a human tape measure. It is impressive. This is so cool. If this lines up, it'll be incredible. If I don't drop it, it'll be incredible. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I can tell you now. I'm not a fan of the aesthetics of it. That one tube just bothers me. It looks like a stock pipe that we just stuck in there. Um, but damn, if that doesn't just line right up, I think the discharge tube looks like it's uh, pointing where it needs to point. The height's good too, because we can run an exhaust hat and it's not too close to the boat. It just seems like the turbo needs to be here, which complicates everything. This piece of pipe right here is just bothering me. What if you put a cool gusset in the, in the turn? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing to give it some strength. Like we could make a, a gusset and like put like a, you know, either cut a design in it or something and you could take it in there and they would look pretty cool. Yeah. Even like a spider web design, just something in there. That would help to break up the tube. Yeah. That would definitely help. Because I think the position of the, the of the turbo is pretty good. But I think the fact that it just slid right on and we didn't modify that pipe at all bothers you. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that is bothering me. I, I got to admit, that is bothering me. Like, the turbos are taller than the motor, which looks weird. You know what I mean? Like, game over, the intake is the tallest thing. I think you're right. Let's lower it and bring it forward. Let's put the turbo right here, you know, as close to. Cause we can aim this guy up, you know, you know, yeah. where, you know that we can twist this guy oh, yeah. up like this, yep. like that. That way we can lower it. And like I said, the exhaust can come, you know, do like, it'd look kind of cool, you know. I'm with you, let's, let's chop this and chop that and bring this whole thing down and forward. <laughs> 
Yeah, that way it kind of looked like, well, we, we got it, let's use it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it looked like it was done in a parking lot on yeah. roadkill. We ain't got no damn bandsaw, let's... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen more than one jet boat that looked like that. So now that we've lowered that, what do you think about using, trying this one? Since this, since the outlet of this one comes out higher, it may be easier to plumb the throttle body with this one versus the one we were trying. I love that idea. Let's just hold them both up there. <laughs> yeah, let's try it. We have options. Let's try this one first, let's just see. Yeah, that one's bolted together. I already like it much, much better. It could come closer and go in. You could probably lay the pipe over. You know what I mean? Like twist twist the pipe. There's a lot of pressure not dropping this on this fiberglass boat. Yeah, don't do that. It's kind of nice. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, and maybe it's just a 90 down from the uh, throttle body to that deal. That looks so much better, Dave. And it got it away from there. Where's the, f we have room for the filter where it's not gonna interfere with anything up front. Yeah, I mean, if you stick a long filter, it's gonna hang over the valve cover, but that's okay. We'll still be able to get it on and off easily, right? Even if we don't run a filter, even if we just run a screen yeah. and like a, you know, a bell on it, it'll fit, it'll look. Here, let me hold it up oh. there so you can take a look. Oh, it's definitely cooler. I like that it's below the, <laughs> the intake now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like the position. I like where we're going with this for sure. Do we want to go in more? Do we want to go further forward? Watch your fingers. I'm going to try something. Okay. You could. So if you leave that right there, you could go across and bring it up. Instead of trying to, you know, make it right there. Right. Um, what if... We could take that V off and do a 90 out of there straight down and then put the V on it. And it's like a T, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that might, I like that, but that might be a pain for our, yeah. for our situation we got going on right here. Because like I said, we, if we leave these straight across, we could almost connect them into a Y mm -hmm. and then just from the Y, just go straight up into it. Yeah. That may look good. Should we go further forward? Should we go lower? Should we, you know what I'm saying? Like, If we go forward, we can go, I would say, as far as plumbing this straight across. Because it'll get us further away from the fiberglass and it'll make us, it'll make it easier to do the exhaust out. I would say maybe an, maybe an inch. Because like right now, you're about that far away from this charge tube going across from the block. So if you go an inch, you'll still have gaps and rooms and it won't be kind of cluttered. Okay. So I can shorten this like one more inch. Cut it an inch and let's look at it again. We're getting somewhere now. It, it could probably go over a little more, but when you take a look, you tell me. It's much better, right, than it was before? Well, you're going to be walking back here, too. Yeah, that's not, yeah. It's going to be, like, in terms of getting it out of the boat, way better. And this is shorter and doesn't look so hokey anymore. We could still put a gusset on that as well. Yeah. Yeah, if we put a gusset on it, it probably doesn't need any more bracing because... This tubing is going to kind of hold it left to right. Yeah, that'll be yeah, that'll be tied together, and then that'll be tied to the the throttle body. The wastegate will go right here. Oh yeah, we have plenty of room for that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just even like if something just from here to here, just adjust yeah. it with a couple of holes in it, or just a little window. Yeah, from look, here to here, that'd look good. That'd look good. Yeah. And we can polish all of that. I think. Maybe having a shorter tube going from here to there will help it spool, but how much of a difference? Who knows. The only downside to what we've just done is the exhaust pipe aims at the transom of the boat, so we're gonna have to go up with it. Yeah. But what I'm thinking, we're just gonna do one that just goes like that, maybe. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. Figure something out. Or just up. <laughs> Tractor? <laughs> yeah. Who knows? You have a flapper on it? <laughs> figure something out. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is good. Like, it'll be a short coupler right here to a T. Okay. So there's a gap between the plenum and the thing. There's a gap between the plenum and the thing. I mean, dude, this looks really close. It might be higher. Rotate the housing like this. Go upward a little bit, because the other one is upward right now. Kind of match the angle. I'm on dead level. 
Something like yeah. that. This looks pretty close. Okay, so the center, can you pull the cap off of it? Yep. Okay, so that is in line with the top side of the oil fill. It's pretty close. Let me hold it. Tell me what you think. <laughs> like, it is pretty damn cool. Whoa. I'm looking at the windshield going across the intake, and then I'm lining that, that line up with the center of the impellers there or whatever. And the spacing is, uh, dude, I, but it's so close. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this. This is the easiest, quickest I've ever plumbed the hot side of a turbo system. I mean, legit, there's two hours in this whole deal. And uh, that's because we use the stainless headers logs for LS, which just bolt right on. Uh, 190 degree bend, carefully cut by Mr. Newburn. A little bit of TIG welding by me for the Shearer Fab flanges. The NRE Turbo's mirror image just fits so good. This whole deal is very compact, which I like, because that means the wife and kids can walk right past the motor to get in and out of there. And as long as they don't fall onto it, they're not gonna get burned, which is awesome. And in the end, I'm betting this thing makes enough beans to probably go 140 miles an hour on the water, which is going to be insane. So summer's coming. We got a lot of work to do, and you'll see that on another episode of Finnegan's Garage here.